वेलकम बैक लेट्स कंटिन्यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग नाउ हाउ ए एस पी डॉट नेट इन लाइफ साइकल ऑफ ए एस पी डॉट नेट हाउ कस्टमाइजेशन कैन बी मेड नाउ दिस इज वे बिफोर वी इवन अंडरस्टैंड द लाइफ साइकल बिकॉज वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इट इज नॉर्मली डन इन एनी लाइफ साइकल सो टू स्टार्ट विथ आई एल स्विच टू विजुअल स्टूडियो वी ऑलरेडी हैव सीन दीज टू प्रोजेक्ट्स सो आई एम गोट टू अनलोड दीज प्रोजेक्ट्स दिस विल बी देर इन द सोल्यूशन इन द फोल्डर बट अवे फ्रॉम कंपाइलेशन नाउ आई एल एड अ न्यू प्रोजेक्ट इन द प्रोग्राम दिस इज गोइंग टू बी कंसोल एप्लीकेशन एंड लेट्स नेम दिस प्रोजेक्ट एज टेस्ट सीक्वेंस now in this program as you can see a uh, simple main method is there it's a console application i'm going to create one more class and this class will author certain methods and then whoever is a user who is going to go and give a call to these methods we just want to ensure a sequence of a call so to just write down a class we'll write down let's say suppose maybe class test this class can have normal methods So let's say void f one first method, and then we'll write down on the console maybe f one called. Same way we'll author the rest of the four methods, three methods. Two, we'll write down f two called. Here also we'll write down f three. We'll write down f three called. and so do for f4 as well now whichever is a user who is going to use test class will have to do one thing in a main method he would go and create a object of test class and call the method the way he or she wants now the problem here is we have got f1 f2 f3 f4 four methods but then user can call this or developer who is executing this code or developer who is writing this code can call these methods at any point of time which means you have not ensured a sequence and what if the sequence really matters what if you want the test class writer to write down the code but then you don't want him to make it open for anybody to call it in any order also so here we have a solution normally in such scenarios what we do is if you have to ensure a call many people may make a uh, you can say solution like make every method private and then have one public method written in which you can call all the methods f1 f2 f3 f4 in some sequence but then that is one more a point this class will be more of you can say with four private methods and then this is more of a concrete class then what if i want maybe sequence assurances if if at all sequence needs to be changed then obviously in a concrete class i may need to change what if such concrete classes exist in numbers then everywhere we may not want to do a change I mean to say we may go and write down one simple public base class as a solution let's name this as test base and why not move these methods in the base class now what will i achieve out of this if i move all the methods in a test base class and if at all in the test class i inherit from test base class itself it will remain one and same thing right if we go to main method if i create a test class object and if i class test obj dot i still have a same access right what if even if i make this classes or methods private now then obviously in the derived class we will not have any access and then we'll have all the methods written over here itself what if i want the test class writer to write down the code but then to restrict the sequence only in such cases let's do one thing let's make this class abstract let's even make this method abstract and maybe we can make this method protected so that it can be called in the derived classes also and let's try removing 
this piece of code now. I'm going to copy it now. Let me remove each one of it. And let's make each of the method now protected abstract. Let's have semicolon at the end. Same thing will go for F3 as well. And here as well. And now what will we do is we'll go and override these methods the way one wants. And now we can write down this code now override again maybe f2 and the writer of the test class can very well go and author any code that he or she wants override f3 as well and the last part which is remaining is f4 now here we are now to ensure a sequence obviously these are protected so with the test class object one cannot just go and call any method because no method will be available in that and to do the sequence ensure or assurance, we'll have one simple public method called now, maybe ensure sequence. And this method will internally give a call to F1, then F2, F3 and F4. And now, with this test class object, what will be only available is one method called as ensure a sequence. And finally, we'll have console.read line just to make sure program doesn't break in between. And we have all called in some sequence now. Now, why are we discussing this example? The reason we are discussing this example is in ASP.NET lifecycle, which is the next session right now. In that session, you will observe that there are many uh, locations in lifecycle wherein customization is allowed. But then you cannot just go and change the sequence in the customization, but then you can feed in your code. And to give you an example, in MVC, to do some sort of, uh, we can say authentication authorization, to do some validation of a data, to even go and uh, do localization in MVC, you'll find out there are methods available which are going to have their own default implementation and are always called by the base of MVC in sequence. But then customizations are also allowed. Just like we are customizing the content for F1, F2, F3, F4, but we are ensuring a sequence. Exactly in the same manner, MVC does allow you the customization. So in the lifecycle session, what is our agenda? We need to understand which are those areas where customization is allowed main area that you will find out is concept called as filters in MVC. And that's one of the part which you may uh, uh, like to understand in more depth, which is what uh, even we are planning. So let's try to understand now how we can, how this example relates with MVC and how the handler concept that we talked some time back relates with MVC. So, Let's go for the next session.